Hey guys, what's up? It's Apple Critics and AppleCritics.com. In this video, I'm going to be showing you the latest and greatest software that Apple just announced at WWDC. In this video, I'm going to be showing you iPad OS 14, which has been much anticipated, long awaited, and, and now we finally have the first beta of iPad OS 14. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get straight into this video. Now the first notable feature on the home screen would have to be the widgets. So you finally get widgets on your iPad uh, and you can just put the widgets anywhere. So it's a new feature that is finally present in iPad OS 14. Uh, so this is actually the today's view. So you can just swipe to get rid of the widgets and you can swipe again and then we have it right here. So it's pretty unique in that way. Now what we can do is actually tap and hold on one of our apps or you can just tap and hold on one of the widgets for approximately 10 seconds. Then you're going to see that we have uh, all the options here. So we have all the widgets right here. Now right here it says keep on home screen. So keep the today's view on the home screen next to your app. So you have that option. So if we actually enable this and then we hit done you're gonna see that we have the widgets right next to uh, the home screen. So you can see that when I try and swipe it away, it will still be there. So we have that option. Now what I can do is actually tap and hold on one of these uh, particular widgets for about 10 seconds. And something really interesting that I noticed is that I can't move any of these widgets over to the regular home screen. They're always gonna be on the side here. So that's really interesting. So yes, I can hide them. Uh, so I can just hide them uh, if I would like to. So once again, what I can do is just tap and hold on an app and the only thing I can do is just toggle in between, uh, keep on the home screen, and then it'll be gone. Or I could just keep it on the home screen just like that. Now what I can do is just once again, get into jiggle mode. Then I can just tap on the plus sign right here. Now if we wanted to add widgets to our home screen, so this is just like the today's view that's always been there. All we have to do is just tap on one of the apps. So we tap for about 10 seconds, and then we press on the plus and then once you press on the plus sign, you're going to see that you have all our widgets right here. So we have uh, the smart stack, the calendar, the maps, the music, the news, the notes, and a bunch more. So what we can do is just simply tap on, uh, let's say, for example, the calendar. And then we have the options to change the different size for the particular widget. So you can have uh, a smaller widget, then we can have a, a wider widget, then we have this one. So you can just add this widget and then it'll be added right here. Now I'm trying to add it to my home screen, but it won't let me. So it looks like we can only add it to the side of the home screen right there. So that's really interesting. That's what I noticed in just the overall uh, first beta. So maybe Apple will change that uh, or maybe they'll go back on their word for that particular part of the widget. Now I was anticipating an app library. So in the iPhone on iOS 14, what we can do is just simply swipe all the way to the last page and then we would see the app library, but I'm not seeing any app library at all. Uh, so what I also did uh, is I tried to go into the jiggle mode and then I just tapped on one of these. And then I tried tapping on one of the pages and it doesn't really do anything when I tap on the page uh, dots right at the bottom. So it's showing that there's no app library currently. Hopefully it's hidden in settings somewhere, but currently I don't see any app library whatsoever. Now the iPad does have the picture in picture, so we can go into the Apple TV app. And now once we're watching a TV show, we have the picture in picture button right here. So it's just an arrow pointing downwards. Uh, so we can just simply press on it. And now you can see there it is the picture in picture. Uh, so we can go to our home screen. We still have that same picture in picture. We can go into the calendar and we have the picture in picture right here. So you can see that we have that picture in picture. Uh, and what we can do is just swipe it off to the side and then there'll be a little tab view right here. And then you can just uh, tap on it again, move it on over. And you can see that we can just go back into it just by simply pressing on this button and you can see it'll take it into full screen. And then we can take it back into the uh, normal size it was and then we can just hit the X button if we want to get rid of it. So uh, it's just that simple. So that is a new picture in picture that we do have. It's very convenient and you can just go on your home screen and go uh, throughout your device and see that uh, that is what it has to offer. Now the Siri interface has changed so we can go into it. And you can see it will say the new Siri. So it says welcome to the new Siri and it tells you about the information and what's new. And there's also a silent mode so you can use Siri. So you can see that Siri is right in the bottom right corner. Uh, and as you can see, as I talk louder, you can see that it's actually changing. So you can see that Siri is just uh, placed right in the bottom there and it looks relatively good. So now what we can do is say, what time is it in Frankfurt? In Frankfurt, Germany, it's 1.52 AM. 
And now you can see it just pops up with that information right at the bottom there. Uh, so you can see that uh, it is less obtrusive than taking up the whole screen of a wide iPad. So that's really interesting. So what we can do is now ask another question. Siri, tell me a joke. What's Harry Potter's favorite way of getting down a hill? Walking. JK Rowling. So you can see Siri had that joke right there and we can go ahead and just focus right here. So you can see it's just in the bottom right corner as well. Now I didn't see the Translate app on my iPad. So that's really interesting uh, that, Siri, that Apple didn't put the Translate app on the iPad just yet. Maybe they're just focusing on improving it for the iOS devices. Then eventually they'll uh, port it on over to the iPad. Uh, so that's really interesting. But I also noticed that the control center uh, is a little bit different. So you can just simply swipe. You can see that the control center does have a uh, graphic for the HomePod. So you have the HomePod graphics there and then also for the Home, so for HomeKit. So you can see that it's slightly different, not too much of a change, but I had to note that it was a little bit different. Now the Maps app did get some more features. So if we go into the Maps, you can see that there is some new features, including look around, uh, the favorites and collections, and also series suggestions. So if we enter in San Francisco, for example, we can uh, see what it has to offer in terms of maps. So we have the look around feature right here. So the look around uh, will just adjust based on where you are. Now, if you uh, were to pick up this iPad, it would have a whole uh, accelerometer and gyroscope integration. So it would give you that 3D view. So uh, it's really good in that way. But it does look very immersive and great on this large screen, 12.9 inch uh, iPad Pro. So I really like that. Now, we do have some more features with it. Uh, so so what we can do is just simply hit the X uh, and then you can see where we are. Now we can hit done. Now there also is the flyover so we can go into the flyover. And then this is the feature with the accelerometer uh, and you have some more integration here. So if we were to uh, tilt the iPad in one way or another way, you can see how sensitive it is. But this also looks really good. Uh, I like the view of this one. So Apple is trying to uh, make it a lot better uh, on the iPad. They're trying to discover some new features to make it even more usable. So that is definitely very interesting uh, with this uh, new maps in the iPad Pro. Uh, so it looks very high quality, I would say. Uh, and that's just one of the features that Apple is really trying to over deliver on. Now there also is an option to start a city tour. So we can just go ahead and look at the city tour function. And you can see how relatively smooth it is. Now there is some pixelation in terms of just not loading up in time, not in actual pixels, but uh, Apple does have some work to do. But once again, it's a beta and there's, and once again, it is a beta. So there's no room for critique until it's the final release of it. So you can see that there's a smooth panning shot and it says it's a Golden Gate Bridge right at the bottom. Uh, and it does have a pretty immersive tour. Uh, so that is the flyover tour uh, for San Francisco and in the Apple Maps feature. So that is the flyover part of Apple Maps and this is the city of San Francisco. So you could just simply uh, pause the tour and then we can just hit the X. So those are the new features in the Apple Maps. There's also some cycling integration. So it'll give you the best route and tell you about the elevation and the stairs, uh, if there's any stairs in the route. And then there's also the EV, so electric vehicles. Uh, if you have an electric vehicle, there's some integration. So if you have a BMW and Ford, uh, those are the first two that will have the electric vehicle integration in terms of direction. So it'll tell you where the closest charging station is and also uh, where is the most efficient route so you won't run out of uh, battery. And it'll just tell you the most efficient route so you don't use the most battery and it just takes all the information in and all the other circumstances based on the temperature and uh, everything that would affect the battery it'll just make it the most efficient and give you the longest battery life for your electric vehicle now, Apple started out the WWDC keynote talking about iPad OS 14, uh, and they said that it was designed for iPads. So they're talking about how the large multi-touch display has over a million apps designed specifically for the iPad, and it's made for that immersive experience of that large canvas for the iPad. So that's what they really stressed on uh, in the a keynote. So they just were talking about what it had to offer. Now, it also said how immersive that the Photos app is, uh, which has the large images and just 
the uh, for you part of it and just will uh, have algorithms for all your photos to make, give you back some good memories. Uh, so that's really interesting. And they had this talk about the sidebar, uh, the sidebar, the sidebar. So they just kept talking about uh, the sidebar feature. So this is the aforementioned sidebar that Apple was talking about. So we have the option to just uh, edit the sidebar and then you have it right here. So it's nothing too uh, revolutionary because the sidebar has always been there. Uh, and they also mentioned the sidebar in the notes app, uh, the calendar, and once again, the photos app as well. So they just kept mentioning the sidebar and, and that's one of the features that they really stressed. And now what we can do is also take a look at the redesigned music app for the iPad. So you can see what the music app looks like in the iPad and we have that sidebar once again. So it's a little bit different. So we have everything that we need uh, listed below it. So we have Listen Now, Browse, Radio, uh, Recently Added, Artists, Albums, Songs, Music Videos, Genres, uh, Compilations, Composers, and then we have all the playlists. But when we listen to a song, that's when it's a lot different. And it's currently playing you can see it looks really really good so you can see that you have the lyrics playing uh, and it is a fully immersive experience it shows the full uh, immersive uh, screen and the large canvas of the ipad uh, so that's really really interesting so so I really like what it looks like. You can see that we have that uh, gradient in the background as well. Uh, and instead of just being the bottom right corner of the music app, it's a full screen. And if we want to get rid of it, you just simply swipe down and then you can see it's back to normal. Now we still have that dark mode. Uh, so we could just go back to the dark mode. And this is what it looks like with the dark mode. So it looks even better with the dark mode. And then you can go into it. So that's what the music app looks like. And that's a redesign to it. Now the main focus of iPadOS 14 would have to be the Apple Pencil. Uh, so taking a look at the Apple Pencil, this is where Apple put a lot of work into and they had a lot of uh, great tutorials throughout WWDC about the Apple Pencil. So they essentially said that it's a drawing canvas for the Apple Pencil now. Uh, so we can just go into Notes. I can go ahead and use the Apple Pencil to its full potential uh, so you can say So you could just say this is a test, but with the uh, scribble feature for Apple Pencil, it will actually allow you to handwrite in a text field and then automatically convert. Uh, so you could go ahead and show you that feature. So now once I'm in a text field, I can just write. So I can write Apple iPhone right there and you can see it did work. So you can see that's a scribble feature for the Apple Pencil. It can also convert a loosely drawn shapes into a more rigid uh, shape. Uh, and the, just the search in Safari is just a really good feature. You can also handwrite uh, in Reminder. So any text field you see, you can just handwrite with the Apple Pencil. So that's a genius feature, I must say. Uh, and Scribble will recognize it. You can also write in a different language. And so it'll just be able to convert and recognize uh, through neural imaging and machine learning uh, everything about what, you were what you're using the Apple Pencil to do. So that's really interesting. Now you can also write phone numbers and addresses and then it will be detected and you can just select handwritten text and put it in the Pages app uh, made by Apple. So there's a lot of great features with this Apple Pencil and it's becoming more usable and it's the highlight of iPadOS 14. So hopefully you thoroughly enjoyed this video on iPadOS 14. If you did, be sure to smash that like button. Be sure to smash the subscribe button. Leave a comment down below on what you think of iPadOS 14. Are you excited? Are you disappointed about it? Do you think Apple could have done a better job? Did they meet your expectations? I'd like to continue the conversation with you down in the comment section down below. And also follow me on the social media platforms that include Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. My username there is AppleCritics. Be sure to subscribe for more great content. And thanks for watching.